not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. No different. The sun went down on all of us last night. A common event, a happening. And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich and one stays poor. Why is that? It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do that changes everything. So that's a key phrase. It's not what happens, it's what you do. What happens is about the same. You might put that in parentheses here. Same. What people do, that's what's different. Anything can happen, right? Everything can happen. I've heard all the stories. I've been one of the stories. Hey, we could all tell stories all night long, right? Happenings. Anything can happen. Have you heard of Murphy's Laws? Anybody here heard of Murphy's Laws? Okay, most of you have. Murph had these laws. One of them was, if anything can go wrong, it will. That's one of Murphy's Laws. He was not one of the great positive speakers of the day. But anyway, <laughs> it's still true though, right? Anything can go wrong, everything can go wrong. For sure. I've fallen out of the sky so many times. Once to the tune of a couple of million. Devastating. Took me a while to survive that one. Now, it wasn't all that much, but it was all I had. <laughs> I mean, that's when it's much, right? When it's all you got. If you got three, two go, you got one left. You ain't looking that bad. But when it all goes. Has anybody been there when it all went? Anybody? Come on, the rest of you liars. <laughs> hey, we've all been there, right? When it all went. Of course, it used to be a long time ago, right? When you ran out of money, got to zero, you were all through. Heck, now you can whistle right on by zero, right? I mean, <laughs> they will bury you. That's what they will do. But see, those are the happenings, right? Everything can happen. Anything can happen. But it's not the happenings. It's what you do about it. Somebody says, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on. Everybody's had their share. Disappointments are not special gifts reserved for the poor. Everybody has them. The difference is what you do about them. It's not the weather. I used to blame the weather, and I discovered it rains on the rich. So see, that won't help. Two men wake up one morning, there's a rainstorm on. One of them looks out his window, sees the rainstorm, and he says, Wow, what a storm! With weather like this, they can't expect you to go out and make sales. He stays home. <laughs> same morning, the other guy looks out his window, sees the same storm, says, Wow, what a storm! But he says, You know what, with weather like this, what a great day to go out and make sales. Most everybody will probably be home. Especially the salesman. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the difference in how your life works out. It's not what happens, it's what you do. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you going to do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Now see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. <laughs> And see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five. Because the next five are going to be like the last five, unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all. Or change a little, or change something, or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. What can you do starting tomorrow? that'll make a difference? Good question. What can you do with economic chaos, massive disappointment? What can you do with a broken heart? What can you do when it won't work? Good question. 
Some of the things Mr. Shove taught me starting at age 25, some things came quickly, some things came easily, setting goals, that was easy. We're going to talk about that uh, later on. But this one I had to struggle with, personal development. It was hard for me to give up my old blame list. It was so comfortable blaming the government and blaming my negative relatives and the company, company policy, unions, wage scale, economy, interest rates, prices and circumstances and all that. That was difficult for me to give up. That was quite a transition for me to make and blaming myself. But Mr. Shove started out with something very, very important. Let me give that to you. He said, it's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens, happens to us all. He said, the key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. And he said, if you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read, do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. And then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take, blaming yourself instead of the marketplace. Taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission. And this one was a little tough for me. He said, Mr. Owen, you've got pennies in your pocket. You've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling. You're behind on your promises. And he says, here's how that occurs. You've attracted, up until now, you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become. Now I said, well, how can I change all that? He said, very simple. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. So let's talk a little bit about personal development. That extraordinary adventure I undertook starting at age... 25. And I've never ceased that adventure. I'm still going for it in the 90s. I want to get better and better. I want my craft to get better, my business operations to get better, the things I do to get better. Because once I picked up this simple formula, I'm telling you it's easy to figure out where the problem is if you go to work on it. Now, let's talk about personal development. And in helping kids understand personal development, I always start with money. Now, money's not the only place to start. Money certainly isn't the only value, but we've all got to start somewhere. And money's something you can count, right? Kids are interested in money, okay? A lot of things are a little tougher to measure, but economics is pretty easy, right? Because you can count, okay? Somebody says, how are you doing? Say, I don't know, let's count. Now, this is not the only count. I understand that. There's a lot of other things to count. But to see if there may be some errors in your judgment and lack of disciplines in your life, we might as well start with money because it's so easy to count. So let's just start there and see whether or not maybe we have messed up. Okay. So here's how I explain it to kids. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Key to understanding economics. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. Marketplace is also described as reality. Reality, the marketplace. Now, it takes time. It takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but we don't get paid for time. 
It's very important for kids to understand, as well as adults. We don't get paid for time. Mistakenly, the man says, well, I'm making about $20 for an hour. Not true. Not true. If that was true, you could just stay home, have them send your money. No, it's not true. You don't get paid for the hour. You get paid for the value you put in the time. So we don't get paid for time, we get paid for value. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of the afternoon. Is it possible to become twice as valuable and make twice as much money in the same time? Is it possible to become three times as valuable as you now are and make three times as much money in the same time? Is that possible? Of course. If you want to really emphasize something, that's a good phrase to it. Of course. Of course. Okay. Now, all you have to do to earn more money in the same time is simply become more valuable. America is unique. It's a ladder to climb. Starts down here, what? About $4 an hour? Big argument last year in Congress about the starting place. Should be five, should be five, should be five. Well, no, it doesn't need to be five. Why not start with four? It's a ladder. Right? This is not a bed. This is a ladder. It's a ladder to climb. Starts at four dollars. Now somebody says, well, should be five, should be five. Well, maybe. If you're going to stay at the bottom for the rest of your life, it probably should be five. But that's kind of a pitiful way to live. Start and not grow. Start and not change. Start and not become more valuable. Hey, the whole scenario of life is to start, number one, and what? Become more valuable, number two. So America is a ladder to climb. Starts at $4 an hour, and the more valuable you become, you just keep moving up the ladder. Top income last year, what, 52 million? Guy that runs Disney? Would a company pay somebody for one year's work $52 million? And the answer is, of course. This is one of those of course places. Of course. If you help a company make a billion dollars, would they pay you 52 million? The answer is, of course, it's chicken feed. I mean, it's not much money. Now, why that much money? Because he has become so valuable. Now, why would we pay somebody only $4 an hour? They're not very valuable to the marketplace. Now, we got to make that distinction to the marketplace. Might be a valuable brother, a valuable member of the community, valuable member of the church, valuable member in the sight of God, to the human family, of course, those kind of values. But to the marketplace, which is called what? Reality. Reality is, if you're not very valuable, you don't get much money. Those are called the facts. I mean, that's how that is. Well, then how do you get more money? Simple answer. Somebody says, well, I'll go on strike for more. Well, here's a major problem with that. Here's a major problem with that. You can't get rich by demand. Somebody says, well, I'm waiting for a raise. I'm telling you it's easier to climb than to wait for a raise. Why not just become more valuable rather than wait? I'm telling you, that's the key to all good things. Becoming more valuable. Why would we pay somebody $400 an hour? They've become more valuable to the marketplace. See how this works? I'm telling you, this stuff is so easy. This is America. This is a ladder. How far is it from four to five? I'm telling you, it's not far. Four to five dollars an hour? If you work for McDonald's, haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. If you whistle while you haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. I'm telling you. You'll get an extra dollar just for a good attitude. Yay, McDonald's. Wear the hat. It's incredible. Five dollars. And then you just keep becoming more valuable, more valuable, more valuable. 